uh, we're at this stage uh, allowing 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes for each speaker. We're not certain how many speakers we have at present. Uh, closer to the time at the end of uh, uh, 10 minutes, I will hopefully allow you, let you know if you, how much longer you can go on. So our first uh, speaker is uh, Gangadhar Rao. Uh, welcome and please start your presentation. Thank you, ma'am. It's an honor for me to speak at this event. Uh, okay, let me set up my screen. Sir, please uh, switch off camera. Yes. Switch off camera. Let me just see. Okay, here we have camera is switched off, not not, not it. Okay, hello. Let's share your screen, sir. You are able to see my screen now? I able to your screen. Yes, yes, we can see it. Very yeah, good. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um Thank you very much, ma'am, once again. Uh, and uh, about our gels, uh, I am Dr. Ganga Dhar Rao. Uh, I am, uh, uh, you know, have been a consultant for the last four years now. And we have a company called Ananya Vijaya Consultancy LLP. We specialize in uh, polysilicon, MG silicon, ingot wafers, and all solar PV manufacturing. Uh, technologies as a owners engineer and also as advisory and process consultancy and uh, so we have provided the services to companies in India as well as outside India uh, in the solar PV manufacturing sector so I am myself is a chemical engineer having about 15 years experience in uh, solar PV ma manufacturing across full value chain so any of the participants, if they have any questions related to the full value chain manufacturing, I'll be glad to answer. So, so today's presentation, we are going to uh, discuss about the sustainable technologies for the silicon PV man manufacturing and the materials what uh, are available in the silicon value chain. Uh, so why this affordability or the sustainability is being uh, discussed now is because of these climate changes and uh, you know most of you are aware about the net zero uh, carbon effects which we would like to have so while to achieve the net zero uh, renewable energies have been seen as the uh, uh, you know most appropriate ones but the renewable energies themselves have to see that during their manufacturing of their materials, their uh, systems, their equipment, uh, whether they are also, you know, reaching the net zero, so that the whole ecosystem becomes net zero. So here, when we are talking about renewable energy machines and materials themselves to be net zero, so we have to see these materials have to be innovative. You know, year after year, the efficiencies have to go up, the costs have to come down affordability in terms of uh, you know costs and the applications point of view uh, also to be there and the manufacturing techniques have to be eco-friendly so that the whole value chain is uh, you know sustainable for uh, to address any of the future eventualities so if you take three stages of this manufacturing especially uh, the life cycle of the pv materials are any of the renewable energy materials you know first thing you have is the production then you have the life cycle which is about 25 years 30 years uh, or maybe more and then end of life so at all three stages are we uh, having sustainable goals uh, which will be uh, you know making it the full value 
sustainability. So in the PV production, we will take a little more uh, details uh, where when we are manufacturing these solar panels or you know solar materials, uh, so are we using lesser energy? Are we using lesser water compared to what it was? We can benchmark, uh, you know, uh, any eventualities of last few years, and then we can see whether we are improving on that and how we can do it much better to reduce these usages and also waste generation in terms of solid waste, gases, aqueous wastes, uh, how do we reduce them and then use abundant materials and safe materials uh, rather than exotic materials and uh, you know which have to be processed in more tedious ways. So these are the goals you know one can set for the manufacturing and when it comes to the power plant and its operations you know starting from balance of systems uh, you know which are trackers and electrical systems and all those things plus during the operations of the plant are we going to have uh, uh, sustainable operations like say the cleaning methods or maintenance or you know those aspects are taken care uh, with the goal of uh, net zero and then end of life you know how do we uh, take care of the uh, the panels which are no more in use uh, whether to dump it or to go for landfilling or recycling uh, because it becomes again a eco uh, ecological nightmare at one point so these are the three aspects which we have to look into and why it is relevant now to to discuss this topic uh, because uh, India is now uh, entering into a zone of, uh, uh, you know, especially from 3 gigawatt to 10 gigawatt uh, range, we are entering into the manufacturing of uh, solar cells and modules and also upstream products, polysilicon and ingot wafer. Uh, so government has given a lot of uh, initiatives to encourage domestic manufacturing in India. And also globally, many countries are now embarking on the uh, manufacturing domestically to overcome the supply chain issues or to overcome the geopolitical issues and uh, so it, it's very apt to discuss the uh, you know sustainable goals for the manufacturing at this point of time if you see in the silicon pv manufacturing uh, process we have generation one technologies which is mostly based on silica based uh, silicon crystal uh, based uh, in which you have manufacturing steps which includes mg silicon polysilicon ingot wafers ingot wafers requires a lot of bomb materials that is build of materials for the processing and uh, pv cells and modules each one of them has its own uh, intricacies related to the uh, uh, you know usage of materials and energy and water all you know types of resources and they keep generating different varieties of waste and uh, so each one of them has to be uh, studied in its own uh, merit like mg silicon it is very high intensity energy consumption manufacturing process polysilicon is also very high energy consumption process right now and ingot wafer is uh, also higher energy consumption and cells and modules are lower compared to the energy consumptions. PV modules, module manufacturing itself may not be very high. It's a very low energy consumption. But if you take all the bomb materials, which includes glass and uh, plastic materials, aluminum and all those things, the energy which is used in the final way is quite high. Similarly, the water uses, you know, for this process is also uh, having its own uh, high low uh, range and waste generations abundance so one is energy payback okay we may be able to pay back but at the same time there are many other aspects which are uh, uh, you know not considered right now in the design of the process or development of the process then you go to the second generation uh, pv production tools thin films which in, which have lower resource requirement uh, but at the same time they have higher uh, uh, material requirement which are not readily available or abundantly av available 
So there is a lot of innovation required at this stage. Third generation technologies right now, they are not affordable. So we are not getting into the other resources and other things because their uh, technology development is still in progress. So in this uh, uh, background, if we see the uh, new plants, whatever are going to come up in uh, uh, across the globe, uh, we should be, uh, you know, taking a lot of uh, focus areas uh, which can see that the manufacturing of any of these uh, technologies is uh, sustainable. We have taken for case study the silicon uh, crystal technology because right now it is almost having 90, more than 90% market share. So most of the new plants which are coming up in the, uh, in the world, they are following this technology. So uh, here we have given uh, uh, the expanded integration manufacturing uh, that is including from MG Silicon to modules and the selection of sustainable technologies, development of domestic supply chain. Now, most of the bomb materials which are used, build up materials, they are all imported from various corners. So that is also adding up to the uh, transportation and CO2 generation and other things. So one is to develop those bill of materials also locally. And for that, uh, you know, the required R&D and local solutions have to be developed. Now, if you go to the each individual uh, segment of the PV manufacturing, uh, silicon crystal manufacturing, MG silicon requires, you know, huge amount of carbon and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, pet coke and other materials which are almost like six ton materials for one ton of silica metal. It is, uh, we have to look for energy efficient process. Right now it is high energy consuming thing. Similarly, polysilicon is also energy consuming uh, stage. Uh, here we have options uh, of Siemens CVD versus fluid bed reactor. Fluid bed reactor is supposed to be one tenth of energy consumption compared to the Siemens CVD. But at the same time, uh, you know, the process is had to be completely commercialized. Uh, only, you know, select one or two companies claim that they have this technology, but it is not uh, fully commercial. And upgraded metal grade silica process, which also is less than half the energy consumption or maybe one third, but the, there are issues regarding the quality and others. So if there are some efforts made here, maybe we can have a very good sustainable polysilicon manufacturing process. Similarly, in the case of NGOT, you have throughputs uh, to, to be increased in the NGOT manufacturing, especially mono NGOTs. And, uh, you know, the segregation coefficients which are uh, coming because of the dopants which we have to use, because of that, our usable uh, NGOT uh, quantity is becoming uh, lesser. So, by making usable NGOT much bigger, uh, it will be easier to reduce the energy consumptions and water consumptions and increase the throughputs. So energy consumption per se, because of the melting of the silicon which is involved, uh, how it can be reduced and how the losses can be minimized is also interest of uh, studies. And then there is a lot of uh, polysilicon scrap generated during the NGOT brick and wafer manufacturing. So how the recycling of this, uh, you know, high cost material polysilicon can be taken up is another research topic. Then we have wafer manufacturing, where again, there are a lot of options available where to reduce the losses and increase the sustainability. One is thinner wafers. Another one is kerf losses, you know, which are almost to the tune of 30% right now. So 30% of the polysilicon which is high grade, high purity polysilicon is wasted. And uh, how to reduce the uh, curves is one thing. For that, there are carefulness technologies, but they are still at uh, R&D and pilot plant uh, levels. How to scale them up is another point of interest. And minimize the aqueous waste, solid waste generation uh, by having some dry cleaning technologies or something we have to come out with. Similarly, at the cell process, you have a lot of acids which have to be used for the etching and uh, texturing and cleaning. Uh, how to minimize those wafers, you know, these acids. There are already some technologies available. Uh, 
uh, avoiding these acids. So more effort has to be made to commercialize them and to uh, see that. Similarly, silver, which is a uh, commodity, uh, but of course, if we can reduce the silver consumption, there is a lot of uh, you know resources we can save. Um, so abundant and local materials uses is another aspect which has to be considered in the cell. And water recovery, the amount of water which is used in the cell, if we can recover, reuse or recycle, that will be very big advantage. Similarly, in the case of modules, aluminum frames and uh, the uh, uh, metal usages, can we substitute them with uh, something which is light and which is recyclable or which is more... Uh, which is less resource intensive materials. Uh, that is one research of analysis. And uh, also glass, you know, this is also very high energy consuming material. So whether we can replace glass with plastics or the existing back sheets and other things being replaced with glass, which is more cost benefit from the sustainability point of view has also to be studied. These are all aspects, you know, if we can, can take care during the policy making because all the new manufacturing plants are going to come across the globe outside China. Uh, it will be more appropriate now. So, for example, in the case of cells, uh, you know, the new technologies which are available, you know, uh, the generation two technologies, uh, each one of them again has its own, uh, uh, you know, complexity involved for the sustainability. So we do look at uh, parameters like abundancy, non-toxic, uh, non-toxicity or toxicity, stability of the materials, and efficiency. So you are starting from perovskites, which are in, you know the maximum research is happening now in perovskites and organic PVs, and then many other materials. So these are the things which, uh, if it, all the things are getting, uh, uh, you know, checked it will be much more uh, easier. Then when we go to the end of the cycle uh, modules uh, thing, which is more appropriate also, because now uh, 30 years life of the solar PV is done, and then most of the uh, panels will be coming out of the uh, power plants for, uh, uh, you know, to dump it into the landfills and other things. So in a Typical PV module, we have, uh, uh, you know, the P PV module itself will weigh about 50 tons per every megawatt. And out of that 50 tons, 65 to 75% is glass. Aluminum is about 10 to 15%. Plastic is about 10%. Silicon, the material itself is about 3 to 5%. And then the balance of systems, which are trackers and uh, the uh, electrical systems and uh, structures, all those things are also, again, another 50 tons per megawatt. So this 100 tons per megawatt has to be totally recyclable. Otherwise, it will become a huge issue. You can imagine when we are talking about 150, 200 gigawatts. Uh, so th this is becoming millions of tons uh, cumulatively in the future. So here, already there are some technologies happening. Some uh, uh, you know innovative companies have uh, come out with production scale uh, recycling techniques but then there is a lot of uh, uh, you know support is required to make them uh, really uh, successful and sustainable like say in the case of metals uh, almost 100 percent aluminum recyclable uh, these have been demonstrated already and 70 to 80 percent other metals can also be reused glass can be recycled silicon is also possible to be recycled somebody has said almost 90% of the silicon also can be recycled. And the polymers, uh, you know, but uh, how much of this can be done? There is still some work going on this. So the uh, takeaways uh, for the recyclable materials and the manufacturing technologies are, one is, you know, we need a dedicated policy uh, with uh, short-term and long-term manufacturing targets and uh, understanding with the global suppliers on supply of critical raw materials so that locally these raw materials can be made available and facilitate technology transfer and knowledge transfer to develop indigenous technologies across the globe and r d support and mandate 
standards, local standards every country can have for the cell module design, suiting to their conditions, regulations to encourage, uh, you know, implementing the environmental friendly process, and advancements in manufacturing and design to reduce material consumption. For example, uh, if we encourage more and more recycling, uh, NREL study shows that as we increase the recycling, the recycling costs can come down drastically, which is very easily affordable. Uh, so the push is required to make recycling as mandatory as possible and so that it becomes affordable in the uh, near future. And so more technologies can also come in to make it efficient process. So for the recycling to make these things uh, possible, uh, you know, uh, we have to make a framework to promote the circular economy and also handle the PV waste uh, by supporting, you know, recycling infrastructure as well as, you know, one can put up some sort of tax on the PV modules so that that money can be used for the recycling efforts and incentivize the promotion of the circle, uh, you know, circular economy in the PV modules. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, if you have any Thank questions. you very much for a really interesting uh, uh, presentation. And because we have so few speakers uh, in this session, uh, I allowed you to go on almost double the length of the time that we originally had uh, specified. And I've got time for one. Uh, are, are there any questions from anyone? I cannot see them on the chat and I will ask one myself because whenever I give a talk almost always I am asked what happens to uh, solar panels at the end of life because there are going to be millions and millions of them all, all around the world. What's the time frame do you believe for uh, this to uh, which I think is a wonderful concept that you are, are putting forward. What do you feel the time scale will be for this to occur? Uh, see, the technologies are now matured enough so that it can be taken up for commercial scale operations. Countries like France, Australia, Netherlands, they have already put up uh, demonstrable plants uh, where a lot of uh, materials are recovered and reused into various processes. So now the countries which have been using the maximum of the solar PV panels like China, India, US and Germany like countries, they have to come out with the regulator mechanism immediately. You know, there is no other tomorrow for this. So that by the time the recyclable plants come into operation, it will be another three, four years by the time they come into operation. But the regulatory mechanism, if it is there today, then we can see that another four or five years we will have a, uh, you know, good sustainable recycling process in place. Good. Thank you very much indeed. And now we'll go to our second uh, uh, speaker, who is Abatula um, Megahead from the German University in Cairo, talking about the strategy for improving solar still productivity by controlling system parameters. Uh, please uh, um, give your presentation. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, I'm Hebatola. I'm an assistant professor at German University in Cairo. I'm excited for joining the conference today. In the MENA region, Egypt has been investing uh, heavily in renewable energy, especially the solar energy. Uh, Egypt has a great potential for solar and wind energy technology, where uh, it installs the desalination capacity for around 800 uh, cubic meter a day, and the government is targeting 6.4 million cubic meter by 2050. As a result, the business opportunity for solar energy development in Egypt are really uh, significant. The scope of my research work uh, is to uh, provide an insight to the possibility of increasing the desalination rate for a decentralized gamut. Um, the solar cell 
uh, simply the solar cell is like shown here in uh, figure A. It's assembled desalination system, environmental friendly, low cost, never lasting, and effortless uh, to be constructed and available all, of, uh, all over the planet. Uh, as uh, you can see, the sample construction from a covered light insulation basin material, uh, you put the liquid or uh, the water, it needs to be desalinated. Based on the evaporation rate, it comes down to a distilled water outlet. When sunlight falls on the transparent cover, uh, the basin water is heated and it evaporated. The water vapor condenses on the inner uh, side of the, gla the glass. Uh, the glass cover, uh, and we will talk later on why glass, not other uh, material. Uh, even there is other uh, replacement like insulator or uh, metal material can uh, increase the condensation. Water vapor condenses on the inner side of uh, this cover plate and runs along the, the cover surface due to the gravity and gets collected gradually in a paper through a condensation uh, channel. Most of the conducted research work in maximizing the single gas and solar cell performance have limitation in combining the factors that affect the system performance. Most of the studies were on a separate factors like absorber plate, material, or uh, the shape of the cell, uh, or even uh, they study only the water depth. Uh, combining all the parameters or all uh, those data together was not included in a novel idea or a research work. Uh, in this study, includes a novel idea for increasing the desalination rate in a passive solar cell analytically and experimentally. In figure two, this uh, shows the wind draws across the year in Egypt, especially in Egypt because the experimental work is done here uh, as the German campus. Uh, with the, 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 the altitude uh, written here under the figure. Uh, this uh, wind speed rules is uh, so important uh, for the glass cover of the cover plate angle of inclination. Um, the advantage of this research work is preventing wasting of material by selecting of the absorber cover plate uh, and insulation material Selecting an optimum design parameter for the absorber plate, uh, which are the plate area, the of water, uh, side lines, angle of inclination, then improving the environmental conditions and how to wide, uh, uh, how to uh, improving environmental condition and how to win and solar radiation affect the system performance. Also, it includes improving water thermal conductivity using nanomaterials. Last fact would be combining all those parameters to have the optimum uh, desalination rate or the highest uh, desalination rate. In order to simplify the thermal energy balance equation for various parts of the single bus and solar cell, the following assumptions are made that first, the heat capacity of the content and cover. Uh, and insulation material side and bottom is assumed to be negligible as compared to the basin water. Water vapor and dry air are assumed to be have like an ideal gas. The physical property of water used in experimental remain constant with diff different temperature ranges. The methodology of improving the productivity of the solar cell is by developing a theoretical model using MATLAB software. The analysis include input data, intermediate result, and output result, where the input data includes the environmental and operating conditions uh, from uh, solar intensity, uh, wind speed, um, and how they affect uh, those uh, input data, how affect on the desalination rate. Then it comes the design parameters from, that includes the uh, lower dimensions and the material selection. Then comes the physical and thermal property of the material uh, and at the end it will be the initial temperatures. From the intermediate, uh, the intermediate stage uh, covers the partial uh, stat, uh, saturated pressure difference between water, cover plate, internal and external heat transfer coefficients, and the latent heat of vaporization. 
Then comes the output result about the average temperature difference between cover plate and water level, which is so important. Hourly productivity and comes the accumulated productivity that needs to be right. Our key finding will be summarized as follows. Concerning the optimum material, we have uh, three material needed for absorber plate, cover plate, and insulator. Concerning the absorber plate, selective coating material for the absorber plate should have a high absorptivity and poor emissivity to increase the productivity of the system. Most research use a black band since it has a low cost, high absorptivity, and easy to be maintained. Other use uh, modification in the material. Um, I compared only two black paint aluminum sheet with a black paint galvanized sheet with uh, graphene oxide coated uh, on the galvanized steel sheet. The highest result is as shown here the highest cumulative productivity, the highest absorptivity for the graphene oxide coated absorber plate with a high rate of uh, productivity. It reached a cumulative productivity 1.5 liter per day. Uh, comparing to uh, the simple black band galvanized uh, sheet, steel sheet, or aluminum sheet. With the cover plate, um, the choice of the glass as a cover plate is, is because of its transparency and the ability to transmit most of some rays to water and water. Additionally, when heat or light energy is absorbed by glass cover, it's either convection away by moving air or uh, radiation by uh, the glass surface. The variation in cover plate thickness only does not reveal any change in the mode result. But decreasing the cover plate thickness only increases the transmission and uh, absorptivity of the incoming solar radiation. As shown here in uh, the figure four, we com I compare the black sea glass with the tempered glass analytically. Given uh, the parameter emissivity, reflectance, transmission, and thickness, uh, the output thermal conductivity varies for uh, plexi and tempered glass. But uh, the result showed that cumulative productivity increased uh, uh, more than uh, the tempered glass. For insulation material, here in the figure, it represents different types of insulating material, and after modeling the analysis shows that the highest conductivity will be achieved using wood burns to reach 2.5 liter per day after being one, just 1.3, since decreasing the ratio between thermal conductivity and thickness of insulator increases the cumulative productivity. Um, I didn't find any research work uh, Comparing the thermal conductivity per thickness uh, factor, uh, the model here repre only represents uh, this case. From the other key finding, or the most important key finding, the geometry of the absorber plate can be summarized in basin area, effect of water to depth, uh, water depth ratio, and then the side lines. First, for the basin area, as the basin area increases, for sure, the cumulative productivity increases, but none of the researchers has taken in consideration the length to weight ratio. It has been taken like if the width increases, the angle of inclination of the glass increases, but they didn't consider as the basin uh, volumetric area or efficient effective area. Uh, here in the model shows that as the length to width ratio of the basin area decreases uh, to reach an optimum ratio of 0.5, it reached the highest cumulative productivity. If we compared a basin area of uh, 0.5 meters square to 1 meter square, suppose that 1 meter square would be higher. But that is doesn't, uh, this doesn't happen in that case. With the length to width ratio 0.5, the optimum one was at 0.5 basin area on the same environmental condition. Um, most of research uh, has worked on the effect uh, of uh, the water dips shown here in figure seven. Um, the result was so competitive to uh, what other research has found that the optimum at the lowest uh, dips of water, uh, comparing uh, 0.5, uh, uh, centi with, uh, with 10, uh, sorry, five milli with 10 milli water depths, 
the result shows that there is no um, big increase in the cumulative productivity, but it will take a longer time. Concerning uh, other uh, factors, like the short time dance, like shown here in figure eight, the angle of inclination control both the, the long side and the short side dance. If I controlled one of them at a fixed angle of inclination, it will give the results in figure nine, which shows that the partial saturated vapor pressure difference between the water uh, surface and the inner glass surface leads to an increase in the cumulative productivity. As, this, uh, as the pressure difference increases, the cumulative productivity increases, which has been done or achieved at a short time length. The same as in cross-sectional area, lens to width uh, ratio 0.5 and width minimally. The third key finding will be the environmental condition. As shown here in figure 10, the model result concerning the effect of wind velocity on the cumulative productivity uh, has been done at solar radiation, uh, 1000 watt per meter square, where decreasing the water uh, wind speed increases the average temperature difference between water and the glass and increase the cumulative productivity. This can be controlled by adding windshield uh, surrounding the cell. Adding reflector can increase the solar intensity. Also adding heaters using solar panels to the system to increase the water temperature. To increase uh, the water thermal conductivity, the study included adding nanomaterial uh, to water to uh, make a, a nano fluid with a 0.01% uh, aluminum oxide. Uh, as shown here, the temperature of water increased. Um, figure 11A, so with the proposed model water temperature, model glass temperature, model basin temperature of the uh, applying a nanomaterial. Uh, the, as we see here in uh, figure 11b, the cumulative productivity reached to 12 liters instead of 1.4 compared to the basic stud or conventional stud. This figure shows the analytical results, um, including the key finding of the uh, heat uh, transfer coefficient, the internal heat transfer coefficient at 0.01% volume fractional. Uh, as we uh, see here, it has a high rate of uh, evaporation, heat transfer coefficient, after adding the nanoparticle. Um, here, a uh, model has been, the analytical results has been compared to the experimental uh, investigations that has been done here in the campus. The model reveals that uh, the average error in water temperature was 4%. The average temperature, uh, the average error in glass temperature was 3%. The average error in the result of the cumulative productivity was 13%. Experiment results are carried out without nanomaterial or considering the optimum all optimum design parameter. Uh, this was done uh, will be done in a further work. Our concluding point will be that increasing the basin area is not only the factor for increasing the hourly production rate, but also the depth to width ratio of the basin. The optimum water depth and short side length for desalination is 10 milli and 100 milli respectively. Cumulative productivity increased by decreasing thermal conductivity to weight ratio of the insulator material. The material and the additive coating of an absorber plate play, play a role in increasing the cumulative productivity. The cumulative productivity increased by increasing the copper plate transmission. The models suggested using plastic glass in, uh, instead of tempered glass. The controlling of environmental conditions by adding extra resources to increase the solar irradiance and reduce the wind speed will enhance the solar productivity too. Addition of a nanoparticle to water enhances the thermal conductivity of the base fluid and the absorptivity. The model shows that using an aluminum oxide nanoparticle with 0.01% volume fractional increases the cumulative uh, productivity by 98%. 
from the limitation in the effect of the seawater and presence of salt on the cumulative productivity, I could include it in the model. Uh, uh, it will be a further work. Uh, also, how to collect the nanomaterial after using to uh, minimize the cost uh, or the waste of uh, these nanomaterials. Increasing the productivity from 1.3 to 2.7, the advantage experimentally has been reached without using a nanomaterial. I think nanomaterial has not been yet experimentally uh, investigated and it will be later on uh, done in a future one. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It is a very exhaustive uh, uh, project and you've done well. I, I must say I didn't realise how many variables go into what looks like a simple solar still, the uh, uh, dimensions, nanoparticles uh, uh, and wind speeds. So you've done a very good exhaustive uh, uh, project. Where do you hope uh, that the technology will be used uh, mainly? Uh, I think uh, the rule of the design parameters are the most important factor than using nanomaterial. Uh, as still uh, the, diesel and the water outcome uh, as a result of using a nanomaterial has not been anal analyzed. It may affect on our health, but better uh, optimum uh, results has been included uh, that this cell can, can uh, out per day can, um, can be used for one person use. So it will be efficient uh, as a, a small unit, so just 0.5 meters. It can be on the roof of uh, homes and will be so successful in the project. That's a good idea on the roofs of homes. What uh, you mentioned there, the possibility of uh, health effects of nanoparticles. Why would there be health effects if your uh, the output of the uh, of the still is distilled water? Uh, are you? How does that impact uh, uh, putting di nanoparticles in your base water? Actually, we are studying several of nanoparticles, not just alumina. Uh, here in the research work, we just investigated the alumina as we have all uh, the uh, physical, physical and thermal properties, including this uh, material. But there are others like graphene and carbon nanoparticles uh, that could be used and be more sufficient. There are iron nanoparticles that can increase the uh, uh, output of uh, cumulative rate better than the alumina since it's a reflective, uh, not an absorber material. Uh, so uh, the results of uh, those material are uh, for water, especially for water treatment, are not yet being considered. I have to test, make uh, several tests for uh, the output water, for uh, if it's poison or not, if it includes any particles of the nanomaterial and it will affect human or not, uh, its effect on the health or um, long study for, uh, especially for water treatment. That's a good uh, thing to do because you certainly don't want to harm people, but uh, it is a, 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 a very good project. Is it a, a PhD thesis or? or yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, and are you close to completing it? Uh, not yet. Uh, still working on an experimental work. Oh, well, uh, good luck uh, and it's a great project. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think uh, uh, to the host, we don't have any other speakers, do we? I don't think we do. Not yet, ma'am. No. So I will close the session now because uh, we have only four minutes left uh, towards the end of the session and we've had two really good speakers and on quite different topics, uh, solar stills and eco uh, PV panels, which is something that really ought to be in productions uh, exclusively. So thank you very much to you both for your presentations and for participating in the uh, Congress and uh, 
I, I will uh, I'll leave you now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye.